Oh my god, these are heavy. Okay, this time on Finnegan's Garage, we are mountain turbos in my 1961 Cadillac Coupe de Ville and making huge progress on this build. Oh, why are these? Couldn't they make these lighter? I like nitrous. Nitrous is good. I mean, I like turbos too, but nitrous is lighter. All right, so let's talk about these things. While I awkwardly place it on my shoulder, because they're heavy. Uh, in this video, I'm installing a pair of 88 millimeter Nelson Racing Engine mirror image turbos. They're incredible and they're patented because they're mirror image. That means there's a left turbo and a right turbo, which means I can mount these symmetrically in the car, simplify the plumbing and it'll look cooler. Now this particular one is what Nelson calls a street turbo. It's good for about 2,500 horsepower. It's happy spot with this 11 blade wheel that's in here is between 15 and 25 pounds of boost. That's where it's most efficient, which should be plenty to support all the horsepower I need to make the caddy run an eight second pass at the drag strip. And uh, it's got an Inconel wheel in it. You can get these things with V-bands on the inlet and the outlet side. My particular one has a T6 flange built into it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put these in right now. Just as soon as I get something to lift it, because I can't hold these for the next 40 hours it's gonna take me to build this turbo kit. So I'm getting out my engine hoist. Car is so low, probably not even gonna be able to get pulled back under it. Nope, looks like I'm not. So, we're gonna have to roll the tires up on wood. Get a jack. So now we'll go forward onto an even taller piece of wood. Backwards onto an even higher piece of wood. This ought to do it. We've gone from a one inch thick board to a two inch thick board and now a four inch thick board. I need a running start at this one, so this time. Back 
I mean, I don't actually know what it is, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's what it is. Why did I build a Cadillac? Oh, there we go. Jesus. Why did I build a Cadillac? Let's see. Now, how's our stance look now? All right, control arms are going uphill. It'd be great if those are a little more level. So let's jack it just a little more. It's still a little, I mean, it's tucking rim. We're not going to be able to make U turns like that. And I don't have an adjustable suspension like Air Rider Hydraulics. Mainly, I don't have that because the car's so heavy. I don't want to add any more weight to it, so I just went with coilovers. No hydraulic pump, no air compressor, none of that stuff. All right, let's start here. Put jack stands under it, and then uh, put some more preload on the front coilover springs. There we go. Yeah, that's way too low. But now I can work on the car at least. It's up high enough where I can crawl under it. I can get all over the place. And um, one of the first things I have to figure out here is where are the turbos going to go? I have a good idea of that. It's gonna require me to put the car at ride height using the floor jack and then steer it and move the front wheel forward and backwards so I can see just how much room I have to play with. Because although this is a Cadillac, there's really not much room in this engine compartment anymore. <laughs> so let's set our right height. That there is gonna be pretty close to where this car's gonna ride. It's basically level. The nose will go down just a little bit, but that's pretty much in the ballpark of where this thing needs to be. So now, now we can uh, get the engine hoist out, build a mount for the turbo and hang it from the engine hoist because obviously these pythons are not gonna hold those turbos for the next 30 or 40 hours while I build the turbo kit. They're more like garter snakes than pythons. But whatever, as long as my wife's happy. All right, so first things first, we want to be able to position this turbo in the engine compartment while not using two hands to do it. Because if your hands are tied up holding this turbo, then um, you really can't get any other work done. Plus, as I said, it's heavy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the factory oil feed port right here, which has two bolt holes to secure a fitting to it. We're gonna use those as a way to anchor the turbo with an eyelet bolt, then the eyelet bolt can hook to my engine hoist and hold the turbo. Then we have the ability to raise the turbo up, down, left, right, in, eight, in, out, however we want it in the engine compartment, freeing up our hands. Now, the reason we're doing it from the top side, obviously that's the best way to hook it to the hoist, but also that allows us then to have access to the bottom side of the turbo, which is where our exhaust is gonna plumb to and also where the oil drain is gonna mount to and the oil drain area is gonna double as our mount for the turbo itself. Like we're not just gonna have the exhaust system supporting the entire weight of the turbo because that's a great way for things to crack down the road. Um, especially depending on where you mount these things, if you hang the turbo, you know, way up front of the engine compartment, you know, like near the core support area, that sort of thing, that's a lot of weight leveraged across the exhaust header and it's a great way for it to crack when it heats up and expands and then cools off and contracts. So we're actually gonna mount the turbo solid to either the chassis or the engine, I haven't decided yet, and then allow the exhaust system to grow and flex, hopefully without cracking, and it'll last for maybe not years to come, but a year. That would be great. <laughs> so first things first, I need to measure 
the bolt pattern right here of our oil pressure port and the two mounting holes. Then I'm gonna take a plate of, of steel, maybe like eighth inch thick, drill two holes in it so we can bolt it there. And then I'm gonna weld our eyelet bolt to our plate. So this looks like these holes are about, let me get the spectacles here. Let me drop the ruler. And these holes are about one and three eighths of an inch apart, maybe eh, inch and five sixteenths apart. And they look like three eighths holes, maybe three eighths sixteen, might be 24, might be fine thread. I'm not sure, it's hard to tell from here. None of that matters. We can put a lot of slop in those holes as long as two bolts bolt the plate to this deal. And we can either thread this right into the plate or weld it to it, either one doesn't matter. Then we have a way to secure this whole thing together. Here's another look at what I was talking about. Here's two eyelet bolts. This one is made out of stainless steel. This is regular old grade five carbon steel there. Uh, that's seven inches long. This one I think is yeah, four inches long. And the goal is to put one of these right here. And obviously we're not gonna thread this in here because that is a tapered thread for a pipe tap. Um, but these are just regular old machine screw tapped. And so I think you could thread one of these in there. However, the turbo might sit a little funny if you thread it off center. So I'm just gonna whip up a steel plate here that bolts to these holes real quick. And then uh, we'll attach our eyelet bolt to that. Mm, yeah, it's about inch and five sixteenths bolt spread, I think. You guys have probably noticed the new toolboxes in here. I did this for two reasons. A, it freed up a whole bunch of room where I can be more organized. Um, and it gave me more counter space. So there's one there, there's one over there, there's one over there. I am way more organized. I actually had tools, I didn't even remember I had them. And one of the ones I wanna show you are these right here. These little doodads are called transfer points or transfer screws. You can get these in a bunch of places. And they're really cool because what they do is they thread into a hole and then they accurately help you find the center of that hole. And the container doubles as the tool holder, which is pretty sweet. That just goes right in there. And then you thread that into your hole right over here. And then what you can do, once you thread two of these in there, is you can lay either your workpiece, the steel, or you can lay a piece of cardboard over the top of it, just tap it with a hammer, and it will mark the center of each one of these holes for you. The other way you can do this, and it requires you to not buy any tools, is you can get a little bit of dirt on those holes and around them right here and here. And then you can just lay tracing paper, cardboard, whatever over the top of it. And you can take a, the ball end of a hammer and just tap, tap, tap around the hole and it'll mark the paper. And then you can transfer that paper to something else. You can do it either way. Or you can take a bunch of measurements and mark the holes and drill them oversized. Like there's a lot of ways to skin this particular cat. None of them are wrong, they all work. Cause this is not precision work we're doing here. You know, we're just gonna bolt a piece of metal right here. And then it's gonna come off when we're all done. Yeah, so you see that? We'll just take this, thread this in here. And you wanna make sure they're just peeking up above the surface of the housing there. Just enough so that when you lay your steel plate on here and you just tap it with a hammer that it'll poke these two divots in there and then you'll know where everything's gonna go. I know I said I was gonna use steel but I found this random chunk of aluminum laying around that uh, is too wide and it needs to be trimmed but it already has one hole in it so that could save time. This might work. But I also have this piece of steel strap that is like made for this. Oops. And this technique would totally work if, if I would hit 
the steel and not the turbo. There we go. There's a mark. There's a mark. That's where I got to drill my holes. There we go. There's our marks. Boom. Boom. That's where we need to drill our holes. Then we can cut this off. Then we'll either weld the stud to the steel or drill and tap it, one or the other. I haven't decided yet, but that's how you use transfer points. They're pretty nifty. All right, this is a really inexpensive drill press that I got off Amazon. This is a really expensive Unibit and one of the best performing ones I've ever had. The spiral flute ejects the chips really well. This thing will go through half inch material. It's really impressive. Not necessarily in this drill press, but I've drilled half inch material with this. And uh, I used to buy the really inexpensive Unibits and just buy them over and over and over again. And I just figured I'd have a lot of them. And whenever I needed one and it wore out, I'd just grab another one out of the drawer. Then I spent 40 bucks on this and it's been in the drill press and other tools for the last six months and I haven't wore it out yet, which is impressive. Uh, probably not the right tool for this particular job, but it was already in the drill press, so I'm just gonna use it. Because, as usual, I'm in a hurry. You'd like to see this video Sunday, probably. I'd like to give it to you. And it's Friday. My kids are gonna be on. This drill press is good. So one downside of the Unibit is when you get to the end of the hole, it'll jump to the next step before it finishes this hole completely. So what I'm gonna do is just turn this over and finish this hole. Just, just the tip right here. There you go. Very nice. And we're gonna go get our other hole going here. And once the other, other hole is done, We'll cut this material in the vertical band saw, and then we'll attach our eyelet to it. Okay, there's our holes. Our eyelet bolt goes in there, no problem, which is about the same size as the holes we're gonna shove bolts in to secure this. And now, we're just gonna cut it off because it doesn't need to be three feet long. And there you have it. All right, that could work. Except that bolt holes right up against that flange, so I need to trim some of that off. Or, just kidding, I did it right because I marked the holes accurately. So now I just need two bolts to secure that to that, and I can either weld that there, or again, drill a hole through it and nut it, or uh, I could drill a hole through it and tap it. Probably just gonna weld it because speed. Okay, here's another tool that I've Probably showed you guys on this channel a bunch of times, but it's worth talking about. It's called a permanent magnetic chuck. It's like having a third set of hands. Like Right now, it's turned off, so this ferrous metal can go all over the place. However, if I turn it on, and I, and I would turn it on faster, except uh, I guess I needed to cut this 5 16 Allen wrench for something. Let me get another one, because this is... This used to be here to turn this on and off, and now it's gone. Okay, back to what I was saying. If I turn this on, ah, I can't move it at all now, which means my hands are now free to grind, sand, whatever I need to do to this thing. See right now, can't move it. Turn it off, I can move it. It's incredible. What I'm doing right now is just knocking off the coating so that this will weld better. And yeah, the truth is, I could just throw a ratchet strap around the turbo and I'd already be, you know, working, except this is a better, safer way to do it. I'll have more control. And this isn't the last time I'm going to use this tool. So it's worth putting the effort in.
looks like that's going to work. Okay. On there. Now we got our eye bolt. Do, do, do. Boom. Look at that. Oh, yeah, buddy. Now we have a secure way to lift this thing up and down. Now we get our engine hoist and then we dangle the turbo into the engine compartment and figure out where can it go. There we go. Look at that! Perfection. Well, the cool part about this is if you want to re-angle the turbo, you just grab either end of it with a second ratchet strap going to the hoist, and then you can you can move it about. But now I can drag this over to the car, and even though I'm working alone in the garage, we can keep making progress. As long as that ratchet strap doesn't break. You know what I'm really curious about? I want to know what this weighs. I'm going to put this back on the table and hook the scale to it and find out what it weighs. Because I'm curious. Or, instead of getting out my scale and setting it all up, I'll grab Wifey's bathroom scale. And then we'll just put it on that. That'll be faster. I'll be right back. So see, when I tell her it's for science, she'll be fine with this. And we'll be gentle, you know, because I think that's, that might actually be glass. I don't know. I'll, I'll be careful. Okay, we are slack. Nothing holding there. I'll even unthread the eyelet bolt because science. 44.3 pounds. That's what this weighs. Now we know. 188 millimeter Nelson Racing Engines mirror image turbo, 44.3 pounds. Okay, that'll be the science portion of this show. Now we get to the fabrication portion of this show. Oh, what am I doing? Use the science again. I should take this back upstairs for procedures. Now, the other thing that the eyelet bolt allows you to do is rotate the turbo. You gotta be cognizant of how many times you've rotated it, because if you rotate it enough, it's gonna fall off. But let's just say we wanted it facing this way because we had delusions of putting the turbo right here next to the radiator. That could be cool, except if you put the turbo here and you make a right hand turn, the 17 inch Mickey Thompson's, well, they run right into the turbo. So that's not gonna work, I've already tried it. I also took the radiator out and put both turbos right there, right in the center behind the grill, which is super cool. However, there's no clear path for running the exhaust under the steering rack, under the chassis, however you want to do it, over the control arm to connect the thing. So that didn't work. Plus I'm also, I'm not real stoked on the idea of putting the turbos up front next to the radiator because this is like a wicked heat source of heat. You know, you're just, this is a street car. It's got to idle in hundred degree heat, you know, in the desert. Um, at some point that could happen or, you know, during drag week or whatever one of those drag and drive events is where you end up at a school bus stop in the middle of summer and you're just sitting there for 20 minutes with the AC on, you know, cause we're going to have that. Putting this next to the water tanks, the radiator, I feel like 
is a is a bad move. So I think I'm going to go a full race car with this and we're going to move this back and in by the firewall. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's just come this way. Okay, and then let's lower it on down. Because I think if we come in here with it, I gotta go back some more. Type briefly here just for a minute to get the floor jack out of the way. something here I think if you tuck this in close enough then the tire can come behind it when you make left-hand turns so a lot of things to consider here you've got to be able to get the valve cover off to service the valve train there's got to be enough room here for the primary tubes of the exhaust to get around the frame rail and the turbo but like I said before you gotta be able to turn the wheels too. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna jack up the car, get the front tires off the race ramps and turn the steering wheel and see where that leaves us. Okay, so there's the tire. And you gotta remember that the wheel is gonna come up higher because we're not anywhere near ride height, let alone full bump. So you gotta have room for all that stuff. And you gotta have room for the exhaust to turn out the back of this thing. So I almost think right here is probably right here is probably the area we have to work with. Hmm. See, if this was a tube chassis race car, you wouldn't have frame rails right there. And this would be a lot easier. You know, you'd have a, a top roll bar tube coming out of the firewall and it would come way out here to a strut and you'd have all this open area to package this stuff. But this isn't that. This is essentially a truck chassis, an aftermarket truck chassis. And so that makes, you know, packaging a little more difficult but it also means it's a really durable chassis that's going to last for decades not a really lightweight race car deal that you know could break at any moment when you hit a, a gnarly pothole or a honda on the highway hmm the other thing you got to think about is dirt coming off the tire you can have room for an air filter. You can have room for a downpipe for the exhaust out the back. Where's the oil drain gonna go? These are all things we gotta consider. But then we commit to one idea and go with it. Because if you don't commit and you're constantly changing your mind, suddenly seven years go by. And by the time you finish your project car, the wheels you put on it are, well, they're not cool anymore. Or take 30 years to build your car and the wheels you picked 30 years earlier will be cool again. 
It's like a fine line. Seven years too long. After that, just wait for 30. Everything comes back around. I saw a fanny pack the other day. It was on my wife. She was wearing it and I went, I remember those. I remember when everyone had them. I remember when we all made fun of them and now people have them again. Such is life. Okay, so that's essentially where I think the turbo can go. Now I'm gonna load the suspension, which is gonna lower the chassis down, get it closer to ride height. the fender okay so this is a little bit past ride height probably by a couple inches which means that's probably close to full bump for the suspension which means now I can lower the turbo down and then I can know all right this is about what I have to work with in terms of distance between the tire and the compressor housing. All right, here's the view from below. There's our frame rail. You can see the number three, five, and seven exhaust ports on our mass motorsport cylinder heads. The header build will be interesting, but not, you know, not a disaster. I've had to build odder looking headers than this thing. And uh, you eagle-eyed people will notice that uh, this engine's missing everything. There's no crank, sorry, there's no rods, there's no pistons, there's no oil pan. We're missing all kinds of things because this is not my actual engine. This is a mock-up block that just happens to have a crank in it and a mock-up pair of cylinder heads that are bare castings. Once we're done with the turbo kit, we'll mail this back to Nelson. He'll mail me my actual engine. And then uh, we'll keep on trucking. All right, so let's bolt our Maven mount on here. Okay, I'm gonna take this thing over to the bench and bolt on a couple accessories and then drop it back in. Okay, so here's our NRE 88 millimeter turbo. It has a T6 flange. On the exhaust inlet side, this is what's considered to be a mid-frame turbo. Um, I want to show you a couple of parts that I'm going to get in play here to make installing this thing a lot easier. The first one is from Shear Fab, and this is a T6 flange to three-inch inlet pipe. It is CNC machined out of steel. It is beautiful. It is going to bolt right there, and unlike the last time I did a turbo system, which I think was on a boat, I don't have to take a round pipe and flare it out into a rectangle to bolt this together. It's already done for me. Look at this thing. It's insane. It is so nicely machined. All the excess weight is taken out of it, and the transition from round to rectangle is beautiful. Max flow there. So I'm going to use the provided gasket. From Nelson, I'm going to use the included studs that came with this, and we will bolt that together. That'll get us ready to go from the inlet of the turbo to the primary tubes and collectors of our header. The other thing I'm going to do, and this will happen first, is this is a Maven Performance turbo mount. It is a combination oil drain and tube adapter. It's made out of billet steel. It has recesses in it so that you can weld tubes on each end of this, giving you a stable mount for the turbo so that the whole exhaust system is not what's supporting the weight of this 44 pound turbocharger. So this is O-ringed. I don't have the O-ring in right now because I don't want it to melt while I'm welding stuff together, but it bolts right where the factory oil drain goes. And then, like I said before, gives you a place to put a tube on each end or just one end if you want to mount this thing. So we're gonna bolt this on here. We're gonna bolt this on here. Then we're gonna swing the turbo back in the car and start playing puzzle pieces to figure out what's the best way to mount this thing while staying out of the way of all the other critical components like the frame rails, the steering, the suspension, the tire, all that stuff comes into play.
this might need to go this way. Let's see. This is Loctite Anti-Seize on a Stick. Know it, use it, love it. This is the only hope you have for getting this stuff apart after a few heat cycles. Here's our next move. There is the Maven mount. Remember I said it's machined with a recess for round tube. This side of it, I think I will do a round tube because at some point I'm gonna go back in and finish the front half of the cage and it'll have a bar coming through the firewall that'll support the fender from there to there. And then off of this tube, we can bend a small one and a quarter inch tube down into that mount. But the other side of that mount is gonna get a one and a quarter inch by one inch rectangular box tube that's gonna go down from the frame rail, up, and then meet our Maven mount down there. And uh, it'll close off that end of it. I'll probably cap the top to make it look nice. But the frame rail is right there, and it's a perfect spot to use something simple like that to support the turbo. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to TIG weld this to that, and then weld to the frame rail, and our turbo can be mounted. And it'll be pretty sturdy. And once we go back and add that part there to support that side of it, then it'll be really sturdy. <laughs> pretty good I like it she is a paper slipper we have just the tiniest bit of gap between the clamp up front there it's came out pretty good uh, so now we're gonna swing it back in the car and then I'll make the decision of whether or not I'm going to weld the tubing right to the frame rail or whether I'm going to put a bracket on the bottom of it with two bolts to bolt through the frame rail. We'll go look one more time and see how we feel about that. What do you guys think? Would you have done it this way? Or is there some other killer method you would have done to mount these? I kind of like this. It's simple. It's going to work. And... I think I might just, I might just weld that right on there. Actually, no, you know what? I think I'm gonna mount tabs off this and then just drill and tap the frame rail and bolt it. Cause that'll anchor that side and then the tube on this side will anchor the other side really well. I had to 
shave the corner of that to clear part of the turbo. Pretty happy with the welds. Uh, I ended up deciding not to just weld this to the frame rail. I made it removable. So I made this bracket right here to weld it on, put three holes in it. That'll fit a 5 16 bolt at each point there, fine thread, and I'll drill and tap the frame rail. And this should be pretty darn strong to uh, hold that turbo in place. You could probably just get away with this, gotta be honest. This would probably hold the turbo just fine and then the exhaust would do the rest of the work there. But later on, like I said, I'm gonna run forward tubes from the firewall to the frame rails and come off of that probably with another tube that just comes up there. So cool this off, bolts to the turbo, swing it back in and then drill and tap some holes and she's mounted. Right here will be a dash 10 or 12 O-ring fitting that will be connected to our dry sump oil system. If you don't have a dry sump, this would go back to your oil pan or valley plate, you know, if you're an LS guy or something. Um, this is the drain out of the turbo and this has to have a clear, hopefully downhill path of flow back to wherever you're putting your oil at. Now we can swing this thing back in the car Mark our holes, drill and tap the frame rails, and this thing's mounted. It would be great to have another pair of hands right now so that somebody else could position the turbo. Well, I marked this, but I think I might be able to get in here and do this from where I'm at. I'm stoked on how this came out. That seems legit. Essentially, that's where it's gonna go. And uh, pull the turbo out right now, unbolt the bracket, put the bracket back on there, and we can drill and tap the frame rail. If you have yet to add the Harbor Freight air over hydraulic lift here to your Chinese made engine noise, dude, you are missing out. Just look at that action. It is a thing of beauty and a joy to behold. For all mankind, womankind, whoever's kind, it is just that easy. And uh, you guys should know that a replacement cylinder for this, just a regular old hydraulic cylinder with the hand pump, is about $80. But the uh, Pittsburgh air over hydraulic one is like 99 It's totally worth it. And yeah, that's the same hoist from when we put a uh, small block, replacing a small block in my wife's El Camino during a snowstorm in Summit Racing's parking lot in Sparks, Nevada. Season one of Roadkill. Still got it, still working. All right, now the only downside to this plan that I have going on here is that, yes, the frame rail curves here and my mounting surface is flat. So I'm gonna have to make a wedge to go in here but uh, it's not the end of the world. They actually make wedge-shaped washers that work pretty good. And uh, so I'll do something for the mounting points near here and there. And then the other thing is, is I'm about to drill in this frame rail, stick metal in it, and well, there's nothing I can do about that. It's a box frame rail. I have no way to get the metal out. I can coat this thing in grease. I could run a vacuum while I'm drilling, but well, I'm in a hurry. So we're not gonna do that. This is a letter I drill bit. It is about 272 thousandths of an inch in diameter. And that is what I'm gonna be using to run a tap. That is gonna be 5 16 24. Fine thread, 5 16 bolt. That's what we got going in here. Bingo. All right, let's tap holes. This is uh, thread cutting oil, it's by Odie. It in my experience, helps really well when you're drilling and tapping things. And because there's not a lot of room here to put a T-handle and I'm not in such a hurry that I'm gonna use a drill or an impact to tap this, I have grabbed a socket that holds the tap 
and I'm going to use my ratchet handle to tap this. I am not a machinist, nor do I claim to be a master at anything, but my experience that if you just back the tap up every so often, break the chip off, then you're less likely to uh, break the tap. It's less likely to get stuck. Mm, frame rail might be thinner than I thought. Well, if this doesn't work out, then later what I'll do is I'll drill it all the way through, weld the tube in there to keep the frame rail from crushing, and I'll through bolt it. But for now, we'll leave it tapped just in case this does work just fine. These are heavy. Why do these gotta be so heavy? All right. Down we go. Hopefully for the last time. I think this is it. We have a mount, we have mounting holes, we have a turbo. I mean, it won't be, won't be for the last time, but for today, for this video, this ought to be it. Let's see. Oh yeah. All right, let's put some bolts in that. Now for now, I'm just gonna put a washer under each end of the flange of the outer bolts. That'll help take up some of the gap there. Later on, I'll get a wedge washer for each end, but this will be fine for now. There it is. She's sturdy. I am more than happy with how this turned out. We have a good amount of clearance to the tire, to the control arm. Our exhaust is now pointed down where it needs to go because it's going to have to snake under the firewall there and we have a good gap there. Pretty sure I can still get the valve cover off. Like, this all worked out good. And this is something, you know, you don't need a TIG welder. You don't need a, you don't need a lot of fancy tools, but this is something you could do at home with some pretty basic stuff. So... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I always do every time I do this. And uh, had a lot of fun hanging out. Thanks for watching. Especially those of you that went to fsmgarage.com to buy the merch. I have all kinds of new stuff right now. And uh, I hope you like it. And I'll see you next time. We'll keep trucking on this. I'm going to build the other mount for that turbo. And then we're going to start eyeballing the headers, the exhaust, and the front bars for the roll cage that haven't been done yet. But now that I have the turbo in there, I know what kind of room I have left over, so that's good news. And we'll keep trucking on the caddy. See you guys.